So I'll get a little more into how small things were solved. The technical environment um, was a normal database um, hosting um, the business application data warehouse. Um, it was PeopleSoft on um, 8.4, it's a version that LCRA um, was on. Um, there were additional data sources that need to be brought in, um, um, both in spreadsheets and SQL Server. Uh, the database server was uh, Red Hat Linux, and of course, they uh, chose for their business intelligence tool to use OBI and DE, and to use the Oracle BI applications 7.9, I, I think it was 3, um, and, and, and Informatica, um, and for the operating system for the uh, OBI and Informatica, it was Windows. One of the things that needed to be done in this project was at the time that this project was underway, you know, Oracle had not yet released adapters, meaning the Informatica mappings for PeopleSoft 8.4. And um, so our team actually took the PeopleSoft 8.8 adapters that had been just released and tweaked those to work with PeopleSoft 8.4. That meant that every single map act and Informatica mapping actually had to be uh, configured, um, but it was a very small configuration. Um, it was just a configuration to change the source table of field um, or the joins between them tables based upon the way that PeopleSoft had changed um, their underlying data structure between PeopleSoft 8.4 and 8.8. And I think that represents um, the fact that even if you're on a slightly different version of your ERP system, perhaps a different of your ERP system altogether, you can make use of um, the preload informatic and mappings changing the source, but with the target remaining intact and most of the work um, remaining intact. For the GLOG panel challenge, I mentioned earlier about the changes to that over time. Um, the the uh, CFO's office and, and the folks uh, responsible for the chart accounts provided translation tables that translated our historical GLOG accounts to the current GLOG account structures. Those tables were tied into this loading process um, of the, the application data warehouse so that then um, they were converted to a current version of those chart accounts. Now, the uh, decision was made to go ahead and load the data warehouse with all of the data as it was with the old version chart of accounts and also with the new. And for most key business users, um, only the converted chart of accounts with the new structure was really um, rolled out. But for the need for doing that historical reporting, um, primarily within the CFO's office, um, the subject area was also available for um, the historical chart of account view, so users could really use both. Um, I mentioned this next bullet point already. Um, an additional uh, configuration was there's a FERC standard for chart accounts for utilities, for public utilities that needs to be, um, NLC area is required to be able to report using those chart accounts. Um, and it was something that they wouldn't use internally but needed to use for their external reporting. And so those additional fields had to be added um, to this BI you know, application data warehouse. Um, and that represents the easy ability to extend the application data warehouse uh, for meeting additional needs. Um, and it was also extended bringing transactional data um, from Maximo, um, their utility power management uh, application. So, as we talk about the solution involved, OBI, EE, and major components of that, including BI Publisher, um, the, um, the, in addition to the ad hoc reporting capabilities and the answers and the ability to put those into dashboards, BI Publisher provides the more um, pixel perfect reporting, so to speak, with the ability to create templates in Microsoft Word of an exact design, um, but to still use the OBI, EE, metadata, and server to populate that uh, so that you can get. Um, very sophisticated reports on the specific structure. Um, it was the financial analytics portion of the uh, Oracle of the applications, primarily the general ledger um, and budget subject areas. Um, initially, um, LCRA had about 450 people querying PeopleSoft um, directly, uh, a lot of that using Envision. And of course, uh, as we all know, uh, there are many. Um, effects and cons of having people direct report directly off of a, um, a production ERP system. And so through this solution that was delivered, 400 of those people were really able to be moved over to OBI and EPI, and I'm sure taking a tremendous load off of the PeopleSoft instance. Um, the remaining, uh, there was some continued usage of the direct reporting from PeopleSoft primarily within, uh, within some of the power financial users. Um, who needed some of that um, instant access to data or uh, needed some of the, um, the financial reporting that was being coming out of Envision. Uh, the timeline for implementing 
with the financial analytics portion was about 20 weeks. Um, I know that there's a feeling um, from LCRA that without the pre-built um, content without the applications that this probably wouldn't be done yet. Um, and this is going back a couple of years ago when this was done. So, um, uh, so there's, there's a feeling that uh, this is a tremendous time savings and acceleration for them. The, the project had a, and I apologize for the detail, I'll walk through this verbally, but um, it had a, a number of teams um, that were involved with this. And this is representing, I think, both the charter account conversion teams and the, uh, the teams for the, um, the application deployment. But it, it starts with an executive sponsor, uh, in this case, the CFO. And it's very important to have an executive sponsor on the business side who's really driving not just the, the budget and, and the money for this, but it's driving. Um, you know, the requirements and the needs and the success criteria and the sign off of this when it's done um, and, and leading down to involvement from the controller and director of financial planning um, with a steering committee um, on the side made up of a number of representatives um, to help provide direction for this. Then there's a project manager as well, so data was functional manager to oversee the project. And then there were technical teams. Um, in this case, the technical team for the actual implementation involved two resources from the consulting group and six um, IT folks um, from LCRA um, and intent to then um, that also involved uh, or there was also involvement um, for data requirements from uh, 10 members uh, of our data requirements team mostly comprising the business and so um, it's very important to have um, the proper involvement from the business early on in order to provide the requirements um, the way that they need them to be and then there's a testing and validation team also of 10 Primarily the same people, the same ten people, and so on. Any of these projects, it's extremely important up front that you know that they're uh, that the business is going to be heavily involved with that downstream testing and validation process, um, so that you get um, build the confidence in the system that people will use it. Um, and then there was an organizational change management team um, that was responsible for rolling out the training and the change communication and so forth. Um, but I, I think this was just to show that there's. Uh, the ability, once this was delivered, to start by looking at GL accounts and be able to drill down to either journal detail or actual transaction detail. So you can start by looking at trends, looking at line situations, and you can get to the detailed data that's going to help you answer why is this outline condition existing. Um, there were some general lessons learned from this project, um, and they, I, you know, I think it's probably good that they just uh, they were pretty general ones. They didn't find any lessons learned that were extremely, um, you know, haunting. Like why didn't we do that before? But the you know, lessons learned is that the business support um, and involvement is critical. So IT is going to be running a large portion of this project, but it really needs to be a business-driven process. It needs to have really detailed project plans with clear milestones, and with communication on the milestones, so the business knows what to expect and when. Um, and then. You know, when this was done, it isn't is with any data warehouse. You know, they certainly have learned that it is always an ongoing concern. As the more and more adoption and business usage of this occurs, then you get feedback from the business on additional fields, additional capabilities that they want. You're always um, having um, the need to continue to enhance um, the data warehouse um, in order to support uh, the, the business. Sometimes they need to uh, see what's possible before they can even tell you the things that they want in the future.